It's your boy, Mr. Blue, back again with a, another how-to slash tutorial on what I'm calling a t-shirt with half sleeves. Um, it's going to feature this fraying detail or deconstructed detail that I've learned over time that I really, really dig. So I want to show you guys how to do that. And we have two ways of doing it. We got one way. You can draft the pattern, do your measurements. If you're more advanced, um, select your fabric, etc and do it from scratch or you can find a shirt that you actually like and just do the deconstructed detail on there i actually prefer drafting my pattern from scratch so that it fits my body perfectly so again i'll show you guys all the steps on how to do your measurements from start to finish come up with a pattern cut your pattern, select your fabric, cut the fabric. I am a, a stylish gentleman myself. I like to uh, accentuate certain colors and put different patterns and fabrics together in such a way that makes sense to me, that fits my personality, my style, and my body type. So um, we're gonna get this started. Now, some of the things you're gonna need for this project, tape measure, pencil, I prefer these. They come at different hardnesses and different values. It allows me to get the pattern done easier. Seam ripper. Tailor's chalk. Or regular chalk. French curve. You also get the transparent ruler section with this one. Pattern paper. You can do it one of several ways. You can use uh, a bigger sheet of tracing paper. That's what I did with this pattern. Or you can go on Amazon, get your roll of craft paper. I use craft paper on mostly all of my patterns after I've noticed that they work. You just start with this type of paper first, using a tracing wheel, and then transfer the pattern from this onto craft paper and draft it that way once I've assured that the pattern works. So these are working patterns until I figure out if it's going to fit right, if it's going to be the right design, etc. You are going to need a good pair of fabric shears. These are my favorite. Depending on your measurements, you're going to roughly need about two to four yards of fabric. I chose this tie dye fabric because I really believe that that's going to give an excellent finish result with the webbing and the deconstruction of the cotton here. Um, it's probably best to use a cotton material for the fact that it does have some stretch. And also, when you start to deconstruct it from the weft, it will result in a more flowing and soft result. An additional thing you may need for this project is a contrast. I'm gonna use this fabric for the binding. So around the armhole, um, inside of the garment, at the seams to keep everything yeah. smooth. You are doing this project from scratch you are going to need a sewing machine. Now, since I've already drafted this pattern, I'm going to show you guys a quick way to draft a pattern based off of a fabric. I'm going to show you guys a way to draft a pattern based off of a garment you probably already have. Now, it's best to select a garment that fits you really well to base your pattern off of, so that way you kill two birds with one stone. You know off top, it should pretty much fit too. It's based off of something that you're familiar with. So to draft the pattern, what I do first, 
I fold the shirt in half. Now, since I kind of did this one from scratch, it's not going to line up exactly, but I fold it in half, and then it will be important to trace along all the outer edge for the basic pattern. Tracing wheel can also be very helpful in pressing through areas that you might not be able to actually get through. Another tool that you can and should use to get your curves proper would be the French curve. You can simply line it up by where it falls on here. It looks like from 12 to 22 and transfer that measurement here. My measurements are going to be a little different because I'm a little taller and I'm a little thicker gentleman. But this shirt fits me pretty well. One, another but. thing to do when figuring out your pattern is to deconstruct it into pieces. Laying it down and putting your pattern on the half mark ensures that when you open it up, you'll have a full, fully symmetrical garment. I also recommend cutting your patterns in fabric on the half. So that way you basically do one cut and then it's symmetrical according to your pattern. When working through the number of pieces you need for your pattern or for your garment, it's best to break it down. So think about everything or look at everything as it's sewn and then deconstruct it because you will have to build in some seam allowance. The back body panel is one piece. The front body panel is another piece. The neck binding is a piece. So that's a total of five pieces. You do have to build in some seam allowance to make sure that it fits properly because technically this garment is an inch longer than it seems, but it's folded back and sewn down to create a really clean hemline. Same here. Not as much, but there's some seaming here that allows for this fabric to be sewn in on the interior to create very neat seam lines. Same with the edges. So those types of measurements will have to be taken very closely to ensure that you're uniform with your seam allowance. That's for my more advanced crafters and uh, DIYers out there and designers. Knowing that seam allowance that you want that makes you comfortable, that works for your garment, will be beneficial. Of an inch, some people do one eighth, some people do three eighths. I overshoot it at about five eighths because I want to make sure that I have enough room if need be to go back in, trim that out, or edit it as I go along without having to recut the whole piece or whole garment. I got this print from a fabric store and I saw that it ran horizontally, but she folded that bundle of fabric in half and cut it long ways. So the fabric actually is like this. The fabric came like that, but as you can see along the weft, but I turned it around and cut it in half because I wanted my piece, I wanted the print on my piece to run vertically. And I find it easier when working in larger swatches of cloth to cut that in half as well so that you don't have so much hanging off the table onto the floor and as you're cutting, it's not throwing off your, your lines. As you can tell, see, I have instructions on my pattern that kind of walk me through how to create this look or how to create this garment. I have measurements. I have instructions, I have more measurements, what to cut, how to cut, etc. This is from a previous garment that I did, another t-shirt, a two-layer t-shirt. We'll show you guys that in another video. But I'm using this as the basic template and I'm gonna make a few amendments. You see here that it says fold line. I'm gonna actually take my fabric and fold it in half. Most designers of seamstress will always tell you, you press your fabric, press your fabric. And I am a little hard-headed. I press sometimes, sometimes I don't. Again, since this is a t-shirt, or since this is a more casual garment, I am not gonna press it because it isn't giving me much problem right now. There's some smoothing that needs to happen. I use my jar as a paper pattern weight. You can also use binder clips to clip your fabric and paper together to the surface. However, we'll do that right now to keep everybody lined up. It's a little less forgiving than just putting a paperweight on it, but, or pattern weight. 
totally up to you what works. Line that fold up right with the edge. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go around the whole perimeter. I'm not gonna cut on that edge. I'm gonna go around this whole perimeter here and get the basic shape for my garment. Now use that build-in seam allowance into the pattern. As you can see, this is usually the edge of, this will be the finished edge and this is the seam allowance that's gonna get caught up in there. I'm gonna go outside of that by just a little bit, roughly an inch. And I'm cutting through two layers of fabric at a time. So you wanna make sure that you have some sharp shears to do that. I'm gonna to try to take long slices so that it appears smooth. something different that because I'm actually going to turn this one into a lower v-neck so I'll show that in a bit I also save all scraps or all cuts because I never know what or how that can influence the design or if need be Another project. This is the front bodice portion. I'll cut. So before I am gonna do a V-neck on this one instead of the round neck. So I am going to I'm gonna go from the top of the shoulder line diagonally I see my line and my cut that I need to make I'm just gonna trim that right on out go front panel done I find it easier too to label my pieces with masking tape and white out or masking tape and chalk. So that way I know what piece is which, what side is which, etc. Little F on there for front or whatever system makes sense to you. My next cut of fabric, we're gonna continue to fold it in half. Now we're gonna do the back panel. I'm gonna cut this one closer to the finished product, the finished edge, because we're gonna deconstruct it and it's gonna be longer anyway. So I don't want to just give a bunch of excessive length to something that's already gonna be a little lengthy anyway. I know it may look like I'm cutting my paper, but I'm right on the edge of it. I'm not cutting my printed, my paper. Another thing you could do if you're concerned about cutting your pattern paper, you can use transparent tape on the edges so that way if you do trim it, it will just nip it. It's also important to note, usually the back pattern pieces have a deeper armhole that you have to account for. Shift that down just a little bit so I can get a cleaner neckline. You could also use a rotary cutter. That'll be a little faster. At this point though, I like the precision cut. Go in here and clean up the cut a little more in the armhole. Voila, we got the back pattern piece of the fabric cut.
this is gonna be this is gonna be our right side onto the contrast rib or matching rib armhole binding slash sleeves since i'm gonna go with the grain of this i want the ribbing to be vertical i'm gonna cut along the edge now i want a two inch rib and the armhole binding so what i'm actually going to end up doing is cutting this four inches wide folding it in half and sewing it down i also sometimes use this t-square ruler from dollar tree it allows me to measure in the t so i want the finished result to be four inches i'm actually going to cut it at four and a half and have a half inch for seam allowance another technique that i found is handy is to use the edge of your surface as a dividing line since this design is pretty playful and fun and it has i'm using stretch materials or materials with some stretch measurements are a little loose the other reason i use chalk is because once i'm done with my mark you dust it off or launder the item or piece and that line is no longer there If you guys see this smoke in the area, that's just my humidifier with my essential oils going. Nothing's burning up. And then we have our rib. Fold it in half. That'll be our finishing edge. I technically should be able to do a good amount of each area that I need to. These are the armhole binding slash sleeves. I'm actually just going to cut this in two. Set those guys to the side. I actually decided to use the scrap as the neck hole binding. Collar, front. It'll be the back. Now technically I could do that all in one piece, but since I'm going to reuse pieces that I already have instead of cutting other pieces, I'm going to go ahead and just re-engineer this. I'm going to do it neat in such a way that you really won't be able to tell. And that's pretty much all the cuts I need to make right now before we start sewing. Stay tuned. We're going to start putting this bad boy together, coming up with a finished product. Again, it's been your boy, Mr. Blue. And thank you for joining us here on 3D Designs and Uncommon Sense channel, where you get reviews on products as well as detail, how-to, styling, design, sewing, anything that I know how to do, I'm willing to share with you guys. So again, thank you for checking me out. Till later.